It's 1950 and the local people of Tollun discover a body in a bog. Hear the story of a true crime over 2,000 years old. Ah, the winter. That special season when the days grow shorter, the shadows grow longer and Mother Nature turns into a pale rendition of her former self. Naturally, in this dark lead up to Christmas, everyone tends to spend most of their time indoors. Among other things, I like to read. One evening, I peruse the shelves at the university library. I came across a small red book flipped across the pages until my gaze settled on the image of a man. I sat down to skim through the book and found the close-ups of his face. There was something about them that aroused a feeling of familiarity, as if I had seen him before that in turn inspired me to put these thoughts to film. Jeg kan i hvert fall ikke se forskjell på sånne skogkjern. Er ikke dessuten noe som heter uh, déjà vu? Dette at man innbilder seg å ha sett en ting før? Jo, det står i skjellet psykologi, det. Minn meg om den. <laughs> Jeg husker en gang vi... Nei, se på det! It's 1950, and Denmark is thriving. On a Monday morning, on May the 8th, the police in Silkeborg, a small Danish town, receive an alarming message. Hello! At the time, peat cutting in local bogs was a serious industry. On the previous Saturday, May the 6th, a corpse had been found in a bog, located in an area west of Silkeborg. It was discovered by two brothers and their family, who believed it was the victim of a recent murder. I like to think that the police rushed to the scene, but found that this was not a case for them. Indeed, it was a case for the archaeologists, and so Professor Peter Wilhelm Glob arrived from Aarhus. Please note that, being Norwegian, I will butcher any Danish pronunciation. A big wooden box was built around the corpse, in which it was transported onto the train for further investigation in Copenhagen. The corpse was remarkably well preserved. You could see the details on his skin, the clothes he wore, and analyze the contents of his stomach. His last meal contained not fish nor meats. It was a porridge made out of grains and seeds, which suggests his last meal was imbued during winter or spring. By the damage made to his neck, they concluded he had been hung and died from it, which made sense considering he had been found along with the plated rope and noose around his neck. And so the forensics established that the Tollen man had been hanged before he was placed in the bog. His eyes and mouth was closed and he was placed in the fetal position. All of this points to some kind of strange ritual. But again, the question remains, why and who were these people who did this? Later carbon dating suggested he had been killed somewhere around 2200 and 2400 years ago. The Tollen man was a murder mystery from the Iron Age. In his book, The Bog People, Professor Glob concluded it was a form of sacrifice. After all, the early Iron Age was a peak time for sacrificial offerings into bogs. Items have been found, such as weapons, foodstuffs, craft items, and jewelry, with a particular high frequency of finds in Denmark. Was the Tollen man a winter or a spring sacrifice made to the gods? Unlike the Romans and Greeks, the Celt and Germanic people had gods and effigies who sometimes demanded the spilling of human blood. In his work Germania, 
Roman writer Tacitus describes a ritual where slaves are drowned in a lake. Afterwards, the chariot, the cloth, and if one may believe it, the deity herself are washed in a hidden lake. The slaves who perform this office are immediately afterwards swallowed up in the same lake. Hence arises dread of the mysterious and piety, which keeps them ignorant of what only those about to perish may see. This god, Mother Earth, or Nerthus, was Professor Glob's culprit. She was the god to whom the Tollen Man was made sacrifice to. Furthermore, concerning the Germanic penal code, Tacitus writes, Traitors and renegades are hanged on trees, cowards, those who will not fight, and those who have defiled their bodies are plunged into a boggy mire. There are problems interpreting Tacitus. First, he has been wildly misinterpreted throughout history. Second, he was writing about the place he never even visited. Would you buy, use and 100% rely on a tourist guide written by somebody who has never even visited the country in question in the first place? I don't think so. As the bogs of Europe were dug up throughout the ages, people kept finding these dead bodies with some recurring motives. Now this is the point where we get into the nitty gritty of some acts of killing. So if you are faint of heart, probably skip this part. Still there? I thought so. Let us have a look at that exclusive club known to us as the Bog Bodies. This man had his throat cut, with a gaping wound running from ear to ear. This little girl died from strangulation. A woolen band was found tied around her neck. This woman was discovered in 1859. She was decapitated. Her body was never found. This man was also found with a rope around his neck. He too had been strangled. This man was found decapitated and stabbed. They found both his head and body. Finally, this woman was mistaken for the Norwegian Queen Gunhild of the 10th century. She was later dated to the early Iron Age. Now, this list is by no means exhaustive, but let us have a look at the bodies that were seemingly strangled. Professor Glob studied the rope around the Tollen man's neck. Among Celts and Germans, the neck ring was a symbol of fertility and remains a recurring motive in art from this period. The ritualistic aspect of being buried with a rope or band around your neck should not be overlooked. It marked them as special individuals, and they may indeed have gone to their graves with satisfaction. But maybe we are overlooking something far simpler. Cruel superstition. Ghosts in North Germanic folklore were real corporal things. In the Norse sagas, the undead or the draugr could rise from their grave mounds and terrorize the countryside. In the Eyrbyggja saga, Thorolf Halfoot, a particularly obnoxious character, returns after death. In the morning a search was made and the shepherd was found dead not far from Thorolf's cairn. He was completely coal black, and every bone was broken. He was buried near Thorolf. So afraid were all men of this walking of Thorolf, that none durst go on a journey that winter, what errand soever they had in the countryside. It was left to Thorolf's son, Arnkel, to exhume the corpse. Arnkel rounded up whatever men he could find, and on an oxen cart, transported Thorolf as far as the terrified oxen would permit. A new resting place was made, and Thorolf was reburied, but only with a tall wall built around him to keep him from coming back to haunt them. Separated from the Tollen man by over a thousand years, 
the Norse sagas still show us fragments of beliefs and superstitions that might have had their roots in a time long before their writing. German scholars have proposed the Wiedergange theory, where the mutilated bodies were dishonorable individuals that many feared would return after death, and so they placed them in the bogs, the only place that could keep the dead dead. Kanskje du vil forklare oss alt sammen nå, da? Ja, gjerne. In the end, we have several possible explanations for the Tollen man's death. In recent years, the sacrifice theory has been deemed the most plausible. We might not even be looking at a true crime. The Tollen man might have sacrificed himself willingly to ensure the hasty arrival of spring or the bountiful harvest. For centuries, academics and writers have strived to say something common about the bog bodies. No conclusions have yet been made. Which leads us to more somber, if reasonable, explanation that there is no common explanation. Nonetheless, the Fenlands entered our imagination, fairy tales, art and literature as a source of the supernatural. Romantic painters conjured an image filled with beauty, mystery and dread. Writers used the setting for new murder mysteries. After a long and international career, Professor Glob died in 1985. His book, The Bog People, remains a classic. Bodies like the Tollen Man bridge the gap between the past and the present. We find ourselves looking at the faces of these ancient people who are not at all that different from ourselves. Today you can still find the Tollen Man at the museum in the quiet village of Silkeborg. Perhaps you will pay him a visit one day and unlock a small part of the mystery of the Tollen Man yourself. Thank you for watching my video. I really appreciate it and if you would smash a like and subscribe that would be amazing. Now, in the spirit of the coming celebrations, do not forget that our Yuletide hasn't always been this peaceful and merry and that from among all our human rituals throughout history, the greatest gift offered has sometimes been that of human life. Adieu.